Okay, now let's talk about the case, uh, the vehicle zero, which is there's no damping, damping term, okay? And I know like it is getting complicated, right? But like, just try to just do your best to understand what I'm saying, okay? So like, you know, the name of like this motion is like an undamped uh, forced vibration. Forced vibration means like there is external force, but like there's no damping term, okay? And the case is this guy, okay? Then, like as you can see here, there's no B Y prime term, but like still we have like the like you know right hand side, which means it's non homogeneous case. Okay, so um, but basically think about it, like if there is no damping term, as we talked about uh, in um, section three point seven, like the oscillation is just just going forever as long as it's under damped motion, right? But like you know, for this case, since there's external external force and we can just simply consider like two cases. First one is, like think about it, the spring is oscillating right now, but whenever it is, like when it is stretched out and you apply the force in the same direction, then what happens? Then definitely your um, oscillation is getting bigger, right? And actually that is the case too, right? Okay, your gamma is equal to omega, which means like the frequency of your original motion is same with the uh, external force. That means, as you can expect, whenever like your uh, like spring is stretching out and apply a little bit more force, it's the same direction, then as you can see in this graph, like your, you know, oscillation motion is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? But what about the other case? Like your spring is like stretch out, but you apply the external force in a, like an opposite direction then your oscillation like is getting smaller. That is case number one. Look at that, okay? And it's kind of like, you know, the, like, you know, the natural uh, vibration and your external force is against to, to each other, okay? So like, uh, that's why, like, you have like this kind of thing, okay? We can say it is a bit, okay? So that's it, okay? So we can talk about a little bit more detail about this one um, with math, okay? So here we go. Let me come back to the like differential equation, okay? And um, like, as you know, uh, like, you know, gamma is the forcing frequency. And then like, you know, omega is the natural frequency, which is noted by square root of K over M, okay? We already derived whole this thing like before, okay? Then the first case, let's talk about your gamma is not equal to omega, okay? Then what happened? So basically, Okay, we have to come back to the, um, come back to the, like, you know, the particle solution form. I'm talking about, where is it? We took this a long time ago. I'm talking about this guy, okay? This particle solution, okay? And like, you know, from this particle solution, we derive, uh, particle solution can be written by this way, right? But keep that in mind. It is undamped motion, which means like your B is zero. This B is equal to zero. Is it okay? Then your denominator is just like simply K minus M gamma square. Okay. Let me rewrite this one on our page. So let me come back to the like undamped forced vibration form. Okay. Um, let's talk about, look at, oh, I regret to use red now. Let me try this blue. Okay. My particular solution was, um, F0 over K minus M gamma square square and cosine gamma t, right? So like as we talked about, your omega is equal to K over omega is equal to square root of K over M which means um, my K is 
is equal to uh, m times omega squared, right? When I plug it back into my uh, particle solution, then my particular solution can be written by F0 over um, I mean, oh, give me one second. Something, oh, there was the square root here, right? Oh, yeah. Right? Then it will be just like an M. Okay, here we go. Omega square minus M gamma square cosine gamma T. Okay, so like from this guy, we can write the solution for, for this case, okay? Is equal to um, F0 over um, M times, let me factor that out, omega square, which is the natural frequency, minus gamma square, which is the uh, forcing frequency, okay? Times cosine gamma T. Is okay? This is particular solution for uh, part, particular particular solution form of the like undamped forced vibration k vibrations, uh, which is case gamma is not equal to omega. Okay, and then whenever you have this one, when you draw the graph of this guy, and you can get like this kind of form. Okay, we're gonna say um, this is the bit. Okay, but look at this question. Okay. Like I'm talking about this question, okay? There's no T term, which means this is really like, you know, just oscillating like with the same period and frequency and amplitude forever, right? So like, that's why like your graph, like social graph looks like that, just periodic and the name of this one is bit, okay? So now let's talk about another case, okay? Which is case your gamma is equal to omega, which means the natural frequency is equal to the first frequency, okay? As I told you, this is the case whenever you're like, you know, for your oscillation of your spring, whenever your spring is stretched out, you apply the force in the same direction, which means you make like, you know, bigger, um, like, you know, oscillation, okay? So that is the case, okay? So whenever we have this one, like since that your gamma is equal to omega, what happened? Your particular solution form is the exact same with the, like homogeneous, I mean, corresponding homogeneous solution, okay? So which means your particular source must be um, like, you know, multiply T as well. Okay. And as we did before, we gotta take the derivative, I mean, like Y prime, find Y prime and Y double prime and plug it back into the differential equation then you can get um, the particular solution form is like this one, F0 over 2M gamma T and sine gamma T. Is it okay? But look at this one, okay? Like the, actually we have like this part. Okay, that is big trouble. Okay, does it make sense? Because like, you know, like when you compare with previous one, like previous previous particular solution doesn't have like T term in the coefficient, which I mean like an you know, amplitude part, which means that like you have like same amplitude, right? But for case two, since there's T on your amplitude, which is whenever T is increasing, your amplitude is also increasing. Does it make sense? And you can easily find that motion in the like in the solution graph, okay? Solution curve, okay? And we're gonna say that is a resonance. Is it clear? So actually these are like all the theory and we will talk about the real problem from now, okay?